Hello, in this video we're going to review the sales order header. I'm going to open up an existing sales order and just provide an overview of the fields available. At this time you can review the order number and the customer number. The order number is defined or the numbering convention is defined during the implementation and setup phase of the application. There is a numbering convention that your business uses you can define it at that time. The order date is the date the order was cut. The schedule date is the date the order is scheduled to go out. And the pack date is the date at which the order was actually packed for shipping. The customer number can be selected from an existing list of customers or you can create a new customer on the fly. If you select from a list of existing customers, the name will automatically populate in the field below. In addition, the customer could have multiple addresses, so it's important to select the appropriate ship to location for that customer. If the billing address and the shipping address are the same, you can actually click on copy ship to to select the uh, billing address as the ship to address. On the right, you will find the PO, customer PO field where you can enter the PO number provided by the customer. If the order is on hold, the reasons why, which are also defined during implementation and setup. The site is the site at which the order is shipped from, where the inventory will be affected. The sale type is another user defined field to collect additional data about the sale itself. Terms are a, defined by uh, the, your business during the implementation and setup phase, and you will have a drop-down list of options available. Commission is the percent commission that the salesperson involved will get for this particular sale. Tax tables and tax zones are set up during implementation, but this demonstrates how uh, tax zones are used on a sales order. So if you select a particular tax zone, let's say North Carolina sales tax, or actually let's create none at all, and you go to the line item on the sales, ta uh, the sales tab, you'll notice the tax field is zero. However, if we go back and select the Virginia tax sales tax, you will note the tax has been added. So the tax can be automatically calculated uh, at the time at when they select when the user selects the tax zone, which is defined during the implementation and setup phase. Similarly, the shipping charges can also be predefined and pre-calculated during setup, so that you have the option of adding the shipping charges at the time the order is cut and it's calculated here. Or again. If you had no charges, you'll see the freight charges have disappeared. The shipping form uh, selects it uh, selects from a list of available reports that you can use for shipping. We're going to use the pack list sales order pack list form for shipping. We're going to ship this via UPS or FedEx. Those are all drop-down fields defined during implementation and setup. The shipping zone is also defined during implementation and setup. Again, here you'll find the billing address, which is automatically populated when you select the customer number and can be copied over to the ship to address if it's the same address. When I go to save this sales order, I have a couple options. I can save to the packing list batch, which will then notify shipping that this sales order is ready for shipment and they will begin packing the order. I can also print the sales order when I save it. So this provides me an opportunity to review the sales order before I email it to the customer. Here you can see a copy of the printed order. This report is defined and customizable in the reporting section of Ixtuple System Setup. 
I also have an EDI profile set up here so that I can automatically email this customer the sales order acknowledgement. In this case, I'm going to cancel that. And now we've covered the sales order header.